we went to the Minnesota Educational Computing Consortium to see how they go about producing educational software. We take ideas that come from the actual classrooms, from teachers, from MEC staff who are working out in the fields. We collect those ideas. We, we kind of wait and we think we have enough to put together a whole package or a collection of programs. We kind of summarize that and we say, we think that this is what our application or our, our new disks might be. The uh, ISD manager selects a particular project to be done. And ISD manager selects one of the courseware developers who is going to head the team that develops that project. The members would include teachers, subject matter consultants, designers, programmers, graphic art people, and possibly our editor. They then sit down and say, okay, how can we put this together? How can we make it happen? What we can see here is the job of the courseware developer, and what cannot be seen, what makes it all work, is the job of the student programmer, and in turn, my job. When the program is approximately 60% done, we start to think about what a user support material is going to look like or what it might be, and then the design person produces that. Finally, when we get the products done, which takes anywhere from six months to 12 months, we then go through review, review, and review. MEC is not thinking in terms of, of delivering entire courses at this point. Possibly sometime in the future we will. Right now we're designing supplemental instructional packages to support or facilitate what the teacher is doing rather than actually doing the job of teaching a course. The microcomputer is just a tool to assist them in teaching it. We just visited a classroom where these little kindergartners were singing the ABCs as they were doing that uh, Caterpillar program on Elementary 7, and they were really having a good time with it. When you get away from just content and you think of the microcomputer and all the things that it can do above and beyond what a textbook can do, that's where things get exciting. Capabilities of graphics and sound are one of the real pluses of the microcomputers. Well, there are a couple of forms that the instructional designers fill out and give to the student programmers. One of them is this form, the display layout form. This indicates how a particular screen should appear. And it's usually pretty exact where it, everything should appear on the screen, and how it should look. This is a frame for one program in our diskette elementary seven. A random number of blocks was chosen and the number appeared out to the side. On the next line, another random number of blocks is chosen and a number to the side and a line drawn underneath. The student is expected now to add the blocks. You can count or you can add the numbers and press the number. This is indicated here by the sum. And if he gets it wrong twice, the correct answer is indicated here on the bottom of the screen. The student programmer is directed pretty clearly as to how things should appear on the screen. And he gets to use his imagination on deciding how is he going to do this. We uh, work primarily with student programmers. These are high school and college level students that do most of the programming at MEC. We have two full-time programmers that are more or less in charge of that crew of student programmers. The programmers will debug the program and help me add extra features and uh, clean up anything like misspelled words, sentences, and in improper format. We'll do an extensive review process programmer will get the program, he'll get it running, he'll give it to the documentation people, do a review of the program, and make decisions on the content of the program itself, and they give it back to the programmer. And that goes back and forth until everybody's happy, and then they document it and put it out for a release. There's now several companies that have come up with, with mass duplication machines, where you basically put a bunch of items in a hopper and press a button, and, and they flip out the bottom. But the process that we use here is a, a manual one. One disk in as master, make one copy. And for the way MEC distributes courseware, we can handle that because our, our unit sales of disks probably aren't more than 30 a day. Most of the courseware in Minnesota is obtained by teachers, educators coming to what we call disco parties. Dis, CO out of copy. Disco parties, and what they do there is copy their, their disks. They bring in 15, 20 blank disks, they spend five hours copying them, and they drive home. So we use that method to distribute courseware in Minnesota, and we estimate that about 50,000 diskettes are made each two to three months. 
And the demand for mech software has just really gone up. We don't see that it's anywhere near tabling off at this point. We really haven't come near uh, finding out what these things can do yet. I think we send kids to school for, for two reasons, and only two reasons. One is to be a better communicator, and two is to be a problem solver. Now, the computer can't do a lot in communication unless you were to view the fact that it can allow you to get at more information and make you a better communicator. But it sure can make you a better problem solver because you solve more problems in different variables and different features. And you don't just solve problem 11 in the back of the chapter and go on to the next chapter. You try three or four combinations. So you learn what the concepts are and, and how to solve problems. And, and the computer is a problem solver, and we need problem-solving aids.